What is the difference between a felony and a misdemeanor domestic violence charge in California? In this video, that is what I'll be explaining. My name is Veronica and I'm a criminal defense attorney here in Los Angeles. I help people who have been arrested put their criminal cases behind them so that they can enjoy their lives and their freedom. And again, in this video, what I'll be talking about is what is the difference between a misdemeanor and a felony domestic violence charge? And specifically, I'm going to be talking about a section called PC 273.5 um, and PC 273.5A, which are essentially the same. Um, now, the elements of either one, like basically what the prosecution has to prove, are the same. Um, they have to prove that the defendant, you, the arrested, the accused, willfully inflicted corporal injury on a victim. So willfully means that you did it on purpose, right? So it, this wasn't an accident. This wasn't you slipped, you fell, and you accidentally smacked the other person as you fell down um, or grabbed the other person as you fell down. It's not, they have to prove that you did this intentionally. And corporal injury means that there was actually an injury. So let's say that um, I slap my boyfriend across the face, but it doesn't leave any mark. There's no redness, there's no bruising, there's nothing. Well, they're not going to be able to prove this because there's no injury to him. There has to be an actual sustained injury. Redness would be enough, um, bleeding would be enough, but uh, like if I gave him a bloody nose, for example, but uh, it would not be enough to just, it would not be enough to say, well, yeah, she slapped him in the face and then and then nothing, because there's no injury. Um, so second, they have to show that there was a specific type of relationship between you and the alleged victim. So um, it says spouse or cohabitant. This also has been expanded to mean dating relationship. It can mean roommate. Um, usually the way to fight this is not going to be to say, oh, this section does not apply. Um, in fact, they'll just charge you with regular battery at that point or assault with a deadly weapon or what have you, depending on the circumstances. Um, this can be an ex as well. This does not have to be a current relationship. And that this injury resulted in a traumatic condition. So again, that could be a bruise, that could be bleeding, that could be um, a cut, it could be redness. Any of those things will count. And the difference between a 273.5 charge as a felony or a misdemeanor is really just the punishment. All of the things that the prosecution has to prove are the exact same. But for a felony 273.5 charge, you are facing prison time. You're facing up to four years in prison. For a misdemeanor charge, the absolute worst that you can get is going to be a year in jail. And there's a big difference there too, because typically, at least in Los Angeles, most people are only doing 10% of the amount of time that, they, um, that they're given as part of a jail sentence. Whereas in prison, people are typically doing, depending on the charge, at least a third of the time. So you're talking about significantly greater con consequences for a felony versus a misdemeanor. Um, now, what does the prosecution look at when they're determining which which charge you should get, whether it's going to be a felony or a misdemeanor. Um, a, bit, a big thing is going to be your criminal history. Another big thing is going to be um, if there was an injury, how bad it was. So if it was like a little bit of redness, no criminal history, maybe they'll charge it as a misdemeanor or agree to drop it down as a misdemeanor. But if there was some significant injury, um, then they're much more likely to go ahead and charge that as a felony. If you have a history of domestic violence charges, they're much more likely to charge it as a felony. And then finally, um, the, I've noticed that even though they don't necessarily admit it, it does seem that the DAs kind of look at the overall situation that's described in the police report when they're deciding whether or not to charge the case as a felony. For example, maybe the defendant um, was allegedly screaming obscenities as being as he was being arrested or calling the alleged victim names uh, as he was being arrested or when the cops showed up. Now maybe that's not necessarily a crime or at least not a crime that they're going to charge. Maybe it's disorderly conduct or something, but them looking at the police report and basically thinking, okay, this person who was arrested is an asshole makes them much more likely to charge it as a felony. Now 
if you've been arrested and you've been given a court date, you were arrested for a 273.5, usually they're going to initially make that a felony. The cops will make it a felony. Your bail will typically be $50,000 and now you have a court date coming up. So at that point, it's, it's not too late for you. So if you've been arrested, you bonded out, and now you have court coming up, the DA is still looking at this case and doing a pre-filing investigation and trying to figure out, okay, should I as the DA charge this as a felony or as a misdemeanor? So if you do have a defense attorney before that court date, typically we'll want to contact the DA and give your side of the story. For example, sometimes it's the alleged victim who was attacking um, the defendant and the defendant maybe tried to stop the victim. And maybe the victim does have, you know, some bruising on her arm from him trying to stop her, but he had two black eyes from her punching him in the face first. Well, if I have photos of those black eyes, then I'm going to want to make sure that the DA sees that because sometimes the cops won't take photos of the defendant. Sometimes they will not include those photos in the police report. They'll hand it over way down the line. Um, and I want to make sure that the DA knows our side of the story and like, hey, this was a self-defense kind of situation. And, you know, perhaps even in that scenario, an accident as well, because, you know, generally, uh, and I've had a lot of cases like this for domestic violence, where it's one person just trying to stop the other. They're not trying to hurt them at all. Um, they're simply just trying to stop them. So any bruising to the arm would also be accidental and just incidental to this self-defense claim. So anyway, I hope that this helps. Um, again, the main difference, really the only difference in these charges is the level of punishment. So it is important to do everything that you can to try to get this charge dropped down to a misdemeanor if possible. At least then, even if you're not going to take a plea deal, worst case scenario is a year in jail and most of the time for misdemeanors, people do not get the max. Um, Anyway, if you do have a case in Los Angeles County, um, feel free to book a consultation with me down below. You can also feel free to give me a call.